For 20 years, Britain had seen a threat in Germany. Germany was competing with Britain for global trade. Germany, like Britain, had imperial ambitions. To protect herself, Britain had indulged in a costly arms race, building a new fleet of dreadnoughts, battleships to block the growing German navy. And she'd entered into a series of alliances with Russia, with France. Germany, in turn, had allied herself with Austria. In the summer of 1914, Serbian nationalists assassinated the Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austrian throne. Austria and Russia mobilized their armies. Austria ready to invade Serbia, Russia to defend it. That summer, Horace Nichols' children, Violet and Peggy, wrote a letter to the Tsar of Russia, asking him to keep the peace. It was a charming, naive, hopeless gesture. The letter got as far as Germany. But the Germans, meanwhile, had declared war on France and invaded France via neutral Belgium. Obliged to defend Belgium, Britain found herself at war with the German alliance and the First World War had begun. After four years, Violet and Peggy's letter would find its way back to the Nichols household, marked unsent. In those four years, about eight million soldiers would lose their lives. From August 1914, you see this transformation in the British press. Up to then, what the papers covered seemed so trivial. A bit like the papers today, you get this mix of celebrities, entertainers, politicians, all spiced up with the occasional scandal, a divorce, a murder. But from 1914, all that changes. The terrible tragedy of this war becomes the focus. A war unlike any seen before. What fascinates me is the role that the camera played in that story. In August 1914, Britain had an army of just 100,000 men. This British expeditionary force was sent to Belgium to bolster the French line, but they faced a German army of over two million. Lord Kitchener, the Minister for War, called for volunteers appealing to British patriotism, and the response exceeded all expectations. Within a week, 175,000 men had come forward. Within a month, that figure had risen to three quarters of a million. Stop! Stop this! Stop! At around that time, Christina Broom had secured a commission as the official photographer to the Guards Regiment, a commission that appealed to her sense of patriotism her love of pageantry and tradition. The young Prince Edward, later briefly King Edward VIII, was a junior officer in the Guards. In August 1914, Christina set up her camera outside the Horse Guards Wellington barracks. She captured the crowds of men queuing to enlist. What they shared, as survivors later recalled, was a belief that the war was just, a noble cause, and that it should all be over by Christmas. When the war broke out, we saw these reservists on their way up to the barracks. Seeing the war was going to be over in about six months, it was a good chance to have a decent holiday. We all went down and joined the cavalry. I was just fearful they wouldn't let me in. I was only 17 and looked it too. I was painfully conscious of that. But for there to be a war, and not to be in it, that would be just too terrible. I suppose what any newspaper wants is a human angle. This photo features from The Sphere, the 14th of November, 1914, and it follows one raw recruit. They don't give his name. It shows him at the recruiting tent on Horse Guards Parade and swearing the oath of allegiance. Then he's marched off to the depot. He's taught how to wear his puttees. He's taught how to shoot, how to drill. He's given fitness training. Until finally, here he is on parade, the civilian transformed into this heroic soldier, ready to do his bit for his country. 
I can't help wondering what actually happened to him, whether he survived the war. These photographs were taken by Christina Broom at Waterloo Station. Families saying goodbye to their brothers, their sons, guardsmen en route for the front. A military band and marching soldiers are always an inspiring sight, but this was for real. They were off to war, and how we youngsters envied them. And to tell you the truth, that was it. Glamour. To be in uniform, to take part in a great adventure, was as much the reason for so many youths joining up as any sense of patriotism. Britain in 1914 was engulfed in a war fever. The tensions of pre-war life forgotten. The suffragettes set aside their struggle. Industrial disputes dried up. Women and workers alike rallying in support of this war. Sometimes the wave of patriotism became over-enthusiastic. Shops with German names were attacked by fanatical crowds. The press fueling fear of a German enemy within. Apparently in this mood of public hysteria, even to be found taking a photograph in public was risky. People thought anyone with a camera was probably a German spy. There were even accounts of people being beaten up. And then they passed a law banning photography in public places. Anywhere near railways, factories, docks, you needed a special license. It seems in those early weeks the war was just an unreal game. But for the soldiers sent to France, the game was about to turn sour. 